Welcome back, everyone, to the 2021 Bowling Promotion Tour, sponsored by Cubica AMF. This is the penultimate semifinal match in our ladies' stepladder finals, with France's Manon Grancier up against the powerful number two seed Nora Johansson from Sweden. The winner of this match earns the right to bowl top seed Daria Payo for the title. I'm Bruce Hall, and I'll be your commentator for the international version of these matches. This is the ninth of 22 matches we'll be bringing you as part of this series. You can see the entire schedule at BowlingPromotionTour.com. Let's kick things off with Nora Johansson on the left lane. And as usual, a beautiful, powerful shot ending up in a perfect strike for Nora to kick things off. And we'll watch Manon Grancier up with her first shot. Manon, of course, got here by defeating the USA's Paige Nelson in our last match. And Manon with a beautiful game straight up the lane as opposed to Nora Johansson, who's going to be probably a zone left of Manon. Manon, of course, a selected for international competition for the French team. And how about a first powerful shot up the seven board and beautiful shot there by Manon matching Nora's strike. And we could be in for some fireworks on this match. Let's see what happens. And look at the extension and the power through that shot and beautiful ball there by Manon. 11 more of those and it will be game over. And now Manon back on the left lane. Historically, this 41-foot oil pattern here at Silver Bowl in Bocuse, France, the left lane has been a little bit drier, and we've seen that play out throughout this stepladder. And let's see how Manon plays it. She gets it out a little bit to the right, working for that dry, and it doesn't quite make it up. And how about a mixer seven pin in the, seven, in the second frame for Manon? And she'll go cross lane with her plastic ball here. She uses that uh, switch grip technology, which many bowlers do, to get that same feel in the thumb across all your different balls. Very good technology. If you haven't checked it out, there's a couple of popular brands of that, and I would recommend you look at those if you haven't. And that, of course, is the plastic ball cross lane, straight at the seven pin. No problem there. Good spare. And so let's see if Nora can jump out to the early lead here. Nora, of course, was the women's masters champion in the last event held in Holland. And this young lady is going to be quite the international star if we get to see her out on the international stage, which I certainly hope we do. And a beautiful, another beautiful shot. Oh, but light. And once again, that right lane a little bit tighter, doesn't quite take the corner. And I think she hit her mark. I think she was pretty happy with the shot. It just goes a little bit long off the pattern. Doesn't quite make the corner. And there's an early split for Nora. The 2 4 10. This is makeable and good attempt. But unfortunately, uh, that's going to leave her eight out with this with the open. and an early 14-pin deficit to Manon. And now back on the left lane, you can see Quentin Derue there from the French team. There's Chris Vialli in the audience. And got that one out to the right, and a beautiful, perfect strike there by Nora in the third. And it's game on. Look at the power she generates with those fingers. And no doubt about that one. This young lady has quite a future. And now Manal. Some of the other step ladders, the first bowler had gone on the right lane, then we had gone left lane, right lane. This one, we're back to the, what you might call the more traditional pacing of uh, Nora started on the left lane, and then we go right, then left. And that's, that's going to be a little bit left, but it holds off for the flush eight. Oh, or otherwise known as the stone eight. And the bowler's worst nightmare. And a true legitimate tap. Look at this shot. 
She gets down through it so nicely. A little bit left of target, but straight up and at the pocket. And perfect, perfect pocket hit. And there's not a lot you can do about that one. Some argue that you can change your pocket angle through the pins a little bit more sharply. But to me, that is just one of the legitimate taps in bowling. That and the smash seven, of course, is the other one. And no problem on the eight pin cover for Nano, giving her the 13 pin lead through three. And Mano, as we said, a member of the French national team since last year. And we'll see her up on this left lane. Of course, the winner of this match faces Daria Payok, the number one seed. We started off this stepladder with a three-way match between Paige Nelson, Veronique Segur, and Amy Vialli. And that's off to the right, but gets it back. And it comes off the dry lane to give her as we say, the crumbling bucket. Let's watch this come in a little bit late, but there's enough of the head pin and catches the five pin, slides it over to the four, and there's a strike in the fourth for Manol. And now, Nora, once again, let's see what move she makes on this right lane after the split she left last time. Can she double up? And yes, sir. Beautiful shot there by Nora. Now watch how, watch how this ball goes through the pins. Now watch where the ball ends up. It turns to the left, and it just keeps going left. You're not going to see a flush eight left by that ball, as sharp as it is turning through the pins. So beautiful strike there by Nora to get herself back within three in this match. So very tight match here. In the first four frames, can Nora start to open it up with a triple? And she certainly seems like the kind of explosive player that could put together quite the string of strikes. And pretty good, pretty good, and blows the rack, but gets the messenger back across, but it falls off the deck before it can do its job in the 10 pin. And another good shot, just couldn't quite get the break. So we've seen that flush eight by Manal, and we've seen that messenger 10 that wasn't by Nora. So a couple of interesting breaks that are determining this match. And nice cover there on the 10 pin by Nora. So now we have a four pin match with Manol in the lead. Neither bowler really pulling away here. It's kind of a nip and tuck kind of an affair. Kind of a thing where you just have to be patient and keep making shots. Make sure you make your spares and uh, hope the strikes come to you. Speaking of which, here's Manol's chance for a double. And let's see what she's able to do. And gets that one a little bit left. Boy, that hooked more than I think she expected. Almost crossing over to the Brooklyn. Let's see if we can see. She just got a little bit left off her hand. It didn't look like too bad a approach, but that ball just picked up and went left almost to the Brooklyn side. And should have no trouble with the 6-10. Of course, we're in Bocuse, France, which is the northwestern part of France about 200 miles northwest of Paris. And these bowlers have been on a tour of France around the qualifying rounds and all of the finals, of course, here at Silver Bowl. And here's Manon with the spare. Shout out to Bruno Bedone, the producer and coordinator of these matches. And Bruno, you can find out all about the Bowling Promotion Tour at BowlingPromotionTour.com. And uh, Bruno is also taking applications for the 2022 tour. They, this tour happens in late September. And uh, a wonderful trip 
as Paige Nelson find out, my friends Amy and Christopher Vialli are there and came over this year. And so just a just a wonderful opportunity for really bowlers of all ages. And that's the second shot that's left for Manon. And I think she might be getting a little bit quick on her feet there. Let's try to have a look. And she's got pretty fast footwork anyway. And I think she got this one just a hair left. And this is something we all fight as bowlers, this tendency to speed things up and try to get things to the mark. And uh, let's see if she can kind of make a little mid-game correction here and slow things down a bit and get back on back in the pocket. So she leaves the 3-6, still with the 4-pin lead. Actually, correct that with this 8-load. It's now a 2-pin lead. And give her the spare. Good cover there. So now, two-pin match through six frames. Can any bowler pull away here? Very nip and tuck here as we go through. And I think we've seen some breakdown of this 41-foot oil pattern. This being our fourth match of this stepladder. So we're definitely seeing some play here. And Nora... Straight up the lane, and ha, very hard and very straight, and gets the strike right at it. Now, this, you're going to see this a little bit left of her normal target. That's going to be right between the third and fourth arrow. But look at how fast she threw it to keep it on line. So a very good at-the-line adjustment there by Nora, giving her the strike in the sixth. And it is officially a two-pin game. And really anybody's game can Nora double here to take back the lead. And another good shot. Hang on. Oh, four pin just a little bit high. Just everybody just chip shots here, as we say. Not Nobody can put together the, the string of strikes. And that's a pretty good shot. She got through it nicely. I think she liked it. Once again, that left lane a little bit drier. And I think it picked up and... She was happy with the shot, just a little bit high for the four pin. And now Nora going to the plastic ball as well for the spare and goes by it. I think she put it in the middle of the lane and caught that puddle in the middle. And watch how this ball does not pick up. She knows it's in trouble and she's like, oh, no, didn't want to go by the four pin there. And so Manol finds herself with a 14-pin lead sitting on the bench. Let's see what she can do with it. And very common, I uh, when we talk about a, a pattern with more oil in the middle, um, casual or, or, if you will, recreational or league players, we talk about do you use a plastic ball or your strike ball. When you're going cross lane, sometimes it's easier with your strike ball. And very good adjustment there by Manon. She did not pull that one. That one was straight up her target. And a beautiful shot. And right there between first and second arrow, straight down the lane. And right a little bit high in the pocket, but high flush. Beautiful shot there by Manon at the right time. And here we are in the late stages of this game. Can Manon take charge? Uh, each bowler has had the chance to take command of the match. And can Manon do it here with the strike? Whatever the final score, this is a very, very tight match. And another one a little bit left. And unfortunately, through the beak for the 3-6. And once again, neither bowler able to really pull away and you can see that one hooked immediately off her hand and there's really no hold left on that lane I don't think if you watch how it hooks early as soon as she let it go and once again to the plastic ball over for the 3-6 to preserve her 14 pin lead and what can Nora do Nora the only bowler with a double through eight frames and we've seen these bowlers strike before, so certainly there is some play going on in the 
in the match and on the pair as the stepladder progresses. And we'll see how the bowlers adjust to that. Now Nora down 14 going into this critical eighth and ninth frame. It's just about now or never for Nora. And if we think about some max scores, Nora could go 213 max. And gets it out, come back. Ring 10. Can't get it to go. Another disappointing lack of carry for Nora. She's missed the pocket but once. And fortunately cannot put the strikes together. Very good shot there. Just couldn't get it to turn up and get through the pins and carry. And no problem on the 10 pin. Way to make that spare. Now, Nora with a max of 203. And Manon pacing at 197. So certainly still a close match. Still 14 pins. Can Nora set herself up for the 10th here with a crucial strike in the 9th? This will be her last shot on this dryer lane. Let's see what she does. And another good shot. And give her the 4-9 trip out. There's the break she was looking for. And nice strike there by Nora to set herself up in the 10th for 203. Now, if Manon can find a way between the 9th and 10th to put a double together, and you can see the trip for nine, and then you can see Nora's form at the line there getting all that power through the ball. Now, let's see if Manal can put a, somehow put a double together here to get her into the 2-0 range. She is clean through the game, which has helped her, but no double. So just those to show she's still in the high 190s without a double right now. And right up at the pocket. Ooh, a little bit high for the 3, 6, 10. And that was a very challenging spare for this stage of the match. That's going to bring the lead down to 11. And more importantly, it's going to bring her high game, even if she strikes out now, to 204. So if she makes this and strikes out, she can shut Nora out by a pin. But first, the very challenging 3610. And. I mean, not the, not the spare I'd like to see in this situation. But let's see how she does with it. And beautiful form and carries the three. Gets the spare. And a clutch spare right there for Manal. Look at that form on that spare. Never forget, folks, that spares are bowling shots. You've got to have good form and balance and hit your mark, just like you do in your strike shots. So... Some good form there by Nora and moving that switch grip over to her strike ball now. Manol now with a double. Actually, with all three strikes, can shut out Nora Johansson. Anything less, Nora can get up and throw strikes to win. So here's Manol. Gets it out on the dry lane. Beautiful shot. Ringing 10. And the most she's going to be able to shoot is 193. And just looking for a little bit more turn on the back. It was a very good shot. You see that six pin rattle around in the, in the gutter there and does not tap that 10. Other shots, she might have even gotten that with that same ball. But here is the crucial spare now for... Manon, can she complete the clean game and get, and then a, the fill will be very important as well as the spare. So beautiful spare, beautifully bold game by Manon. That's going to give her the clean game. So without a double, and assuming she gets seven or more here, she'll be in the 190s. And let that be a lesson that without a double, She's in a very, very good position to win this match. And so 
That's a really exhibition of fundamentals and staying patient and making your spares. And a very, very good game here, bowled by Manon. And let's see if she can put a strike on the board because that's important because it would force Nora to double and she does strike that time. The six pin did its job to give her the 193. And so had she not struck there, it could have been just a single strike needed by Nora. But now Nora needs the double because she has 143 in the eighth and if she gets the first one in the ninth, in the tenth, excuse me, and then does not strike again, she'll be under 193. So Nora now needs the double. And count will be irrelevant. If she can double, she will advance to face Daria Pyoke. And what will she do? Put all that power on the shot into the pocket. And no, it does the same ball behavior as she got in the very first frame on that lane. She can't get it to make the corner. And oh, Manon Grancier with a very well bowled game is now going to earn the right to face Daria Payo. And Nora obviously disappointed. But what a close match that was with a, and we said 171, a 22 pin advantage for Manon, but an incredibly close game down to the very last shot. And congratulations to both these ladies, and we'll see you back here for the final. Manon, super demi-finale, ça s'est joué à la 10, vous n'avez fait aucune erreur hein, sur ce match. Pourtant, on aura été favorite, alors là, maintenant, vous allez affronter du très très lourd Daria Payok. On est tous derrière vous parce que c'est vraiment exceptionnel d'avoir une jeune joueuse française en finale. Alors, comment vous allez aborder ce match euh, Je vais mettre en place ce que j'ai mis en place depuis le début de cette compétition, c'est-à-dire euh, beaucoup de concentration et de, et de respiration pour rester concentré et garder mon calme et pas laisser les émotions prendre le dessus. Ok, et est-ce que vous pensez que vous voulez déstabiliser euh, Daria Peut-être pas déstabiliser, mais euh, je pense que, comme j'ai dit pour moi, j'ai mes sciences. Et, euh, et puis voilà. En tout cas, bonne chance maintenant. On est beaucoup. tous avec vous. C'est gentil.